Okay, great. So now we have the challenge students, and we have a great representation here of the different levels of challenge um, and intelligence. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, so these are some of, this is a good sampling of what we do here in challenge. Josh and Kyle are in the same age and, to, and the same uh, level. Challenge. Y'all are going into challenge one, correct? Yes. All right. And Tally and Caleb are going to be going into challenge three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with these two questions that have already been turned in, and then we're going to take a few more questions to cover 15 minutes. All right? Okay. So um, how many times a day did you work on memory work when you were at the 7 to 10 age range? In other words, in foundations, how many hours do you think a day you were actually focusing on your memory work? We'll start with you on the first question, and then we'll hit we're going to start with someone who did foundation. <laughs> I was only in for one year, so if I can one year. I was, okay. I was in for one and a half years. Speak so. on the one and a half years. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, sorry. Can you say what challenge I'm going So right now. I'm going, I'm going into three, so I just finished two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when I was in foundations and essentials, I spent. Probably an hour memorization today. I love having my mom here. She answers questions. I don't tell Anyways, um, yeah, I probably spent an hour on foundation today. But after challenge A, I redid all the foundations to memory work, and that's when I really went for like a memory master type thing. Um, and then I spent about an hour and a half to two hours a day, and that was after challenge A. Tell them why. Oh, because. I kind of failed in my math and one. Not really, but I could have done better. <laughs> so I remember I messed up again and I was like, well, I'll get it the next year, which was so cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's. You didn't do it. Of course you didn't do it. I started with you. Okay. What were some of your favorite ways your mom reviewed? Oh, they didn't really do foundations. Um, but let's speak on siblings. What were some of the favorite ways your siblings have enjoyed the way your mom or the way the memory work was handled at home? Can we speak on siblings? Yeah, okay, because they all have siblings that have been in foundations. And can you give examples from different ages? In other words, can you sing songs and chant something for us? <laughs> so just based on Jonathan, what have you seen? And be, be nice. We love well, Jonathan. No, yes, well, I love my mom. But um, he, I love, he always stood up and he did the hand motions and he would like dance around and sing the songs and he would just have a great time with it. So that that was how he always did it uh memorized the material. My sister Carson loved the songs. She was in foundations for two years and I have to say that you want to put them through foundations because I was in there for one year and it was horrible not knowing all the stuff that the other kids had down by memory, Latin endings, all that stuff. I had to start for the first time, which a lot of the other kids like Celine, Tally's younger sister, already had. My sister has done a lot better than I did, I think, in Latin than I did in Challenge A because she had those memories uh, memory stuff. Dang. Okay. Uh, personally, my mom is very strong believer in the stick in the sand method. So we would kind of just drill just all the time. That was that we just had the CD playing just constantly, especially when we were making dinner. Me and Celine would go in there, and when the songs came on, we loved it because that's the only songs we ever had for stuff. We were just like, yes, awesome. Uh, uh, so we would sit there and sing the songs while making dinner. But with Lillian, poor Celine, you Celine. Well, okay, with Celine and Lillian, I guess it depends on the subject matter. Because with math, we've always just drilled it. Like sometimes a chance helps a lot, um, but mainly it's just drilling for us, which tends to help. Yeah, but the songs we always use the songs. No, the history tenants that we use the song. Whatever they're called. That's what we did. Right? Yes. It's your time, yeah. Katie. <laughs> She's like over oh, there, like lost. Well, I'm Josh's brother, so we had the same little younger brother, Jonathan. Just, 
read what he said. He just did it however he wanted. So he sang, he danced around, he had a great time. It helped him memorize it too. Helped me memorize it. I memorized it just listening to him. So. And we need to hear that. That's good. Excellent. Something that we've come prepared with is um, Kyle is going to show you. Um, what did you bring, sweetheart? Your, your I brought. Science? I'm going to talk about our science. Oh, okay. great. Probably our chart too. Just Ex so excellent. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to talk, we're going to, real quickly, they're going to tell you just a little bit about some projects that they do in the challenge program. Uh, mock trial, Joshua's going to address, and then Kyle's going to talk about their science project that they worked on in challenge B. And then Tally is going to talk a little bit on their art and history notebooks that they do. Um, she went to bring it, we're sorry, I forgot to. And then Caleb is going to be thinking about something that he's going to share with you <laughs> that he did this last year in challenge one. So we're going to start with Joshua with mock trial. Okay, so first of all, mock trial is by far my favorite subject I've done a challenge. What, it, what mock trial is, is it gives your child the opportunity to witness and experience a courtroom setting. So they will be given a role, a lawyer, a witness, something like that, and they will take this part and they will memorize the aspects of it and the positions of it, and they will perform it in a courtroom setting at the end of the year. So like for me, I was a, uh, I was a uh, prosecution lawyer. So, oh yes, and the, the material is all taken from real cases that are a real case that has actually happened. So what this, it, like I said, it gives you, your child the opportunity to experience this. It's great because one of the things I enjoyed is I was given a specific position, but then I was also, I saw the other positions like, oh, that, that's kind of cool, I like doing that. Well, the good thing about this is everybody, even though you're given a role, they study each position. So you're not just focused on yours, you're focused on all of them, and you get the whole, the entire entirety of it, and you get to witness and experience all the parts, where, and, um, except for the actual day where you're just doing one part. The skills that have come with this is public speaking, of course, you, you know, nice. You got to learn to talk loud and speak up and stuff. And uh, um, you have to be able to study material. That was one of the things that I struggled with was studying material. I needed to look at this uh, case and study it and pick out things. And you really have to read over it a lot of times because you you will read something and you'll see, okay, that, that's that's that. But then you'll look, o look over it again and you'll be like, that's something different. And so you have to really study the material to get each characteristic of the person you're, you're, you're looking at. And you have to really study the material. The last thing is uh, thinking on your feet. The mock trial, you, you study for mock trial and you study each day, but the day of the actual trial, you, you could find something in there that you didn't prepare for at all. So it, it really, <clears throat> makes you think on your feet and even the practices you you think on your feet and it, that's something I really enjoyed and it, it really helped me okay. I'm doing I'm going to be talking about challenge B science we had two segments of science first semester we talked about history of science and we basically went through all the basic inventors that are famous. Copernicus, Daniel <coughs> Morse, Michael Faraday, and one of them, when AS classification of the species, we had to do a project where we picked a certain animal and plant and we had to classify it. This is my project. I started, I did the black mamba snake and I started from Kingdom Animalia and worked it all the way up. Most of them were, no, um, <laughs> I was going to say something wasn't relevant. I also did the death cat mushroom and I like this project a lot because it allows me to see how other things, how everything's related. Even though it's a mushroom, it can still be in the same phylum as a flower even though they're two totally different organisms. Okay, so
So the art and history notebooks for challenge, we did two, right? Yeah, we did two. Um, are, are worked on all year. So the first semester you work on your art history and you write, you research and write a paper on an um, artist from either the Baroque, classical, neoclassical, etc., all the way to modern. Period, each week. <laughs> and then at the end, you compile it in a notebook with uh, an introduction on each period, a paper written on that, as well as a timeline, vocabulary, bibliography, and the papers. Yeah. Anyways, so that's, so you do art the first semester and then music history the next semester. And at the end of each semester, you have a basically a midterm where you have to, for art, be able to identify and name the title, location of the art piece, period it was written, uh, painted, the actual time it was painted, and the artist for each one. For music, you have to be able to identify the time period, the composer, the music piece from a snippet of the music. And, and then you have a presentation each semester. Oh, yeah, and you have a presentation as well, which I totally forgot about. So our presentation is an art grant. You are, hypothetically speaking, uh, creating a, an art grant proposal. So, for instance, I did a, a, a museum exhibit where you take, anyway, I did a museum, a museum exhibit, I did uh, artwork outlining what it would have been like. Then you also give a presentation on that. You can use a presentation software or just slides or billboards or however you would like to do that. But you're basically learning the process of filling out the grant form, presenting something to a board, um, committees, and that type of thing. Then the art presentation, or sorry, the music presentation, you cover three different periods of art music, thank you, and how they relate to each other. Or you can do one period of music with three different, you're comparing and analyzing music, basically, for that one. And you can use slides or tell if you wish to do that. So here. Tally, you might want to mention how that correlates to what they learn in foundations with the artist and composer. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> um, so in Foundation and Essentials, you're getting the artists and composers in just the timeline facts about them, which is very helpful later on when you're doing this because my sister was doing it at the same time. And so I was able to give her more insight and she was able to remind me of a few things that I had forgotten or just hadn't covered in my research. Um, and it's a nice basis because you already are familiar with all of the, the topics and you don't have to come in why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I've seen two hours. So, <laughs> I about, anyway, just seeing how the art relates was so cool the entire semester. Because you study the art and then you do uh, How Should We Can Live, which is basically shows the decline of man when you take God out of the equation. So, reading through that book and watching the videos, plus studying the art and showing how man has put the worldview in the art. And then learning what true art is, and then getting to make your own art project, knowing what true art is, seeing how it all works together was really cool, which I really enjoyed the whole time doing that, and music as well. What about science? Can you speak to the science projects? You all did the, the science experiments and the dissecting in the lab reports? I did that last year, so I did it. No, you did biology. Just go with it. Right. The dissection. Dissected. <laughs> that's totally I don't know what she's prepared. That's okay. Well, I did, it's okay. We'll probably get a question about it. So now let's take, um, are we done? Or should we go a little? Let's take questions. A couple of questions. Yeah, because I know y'all want to ask them. I just want to know how old, how old are y'all? 16, 16. 16. 15. 14. Another question? Uh, yes. I have two that will probably go into challenge next year, challenge eight. And I was trying to see for science, like the experiments, 
and everything, is that done at home or do you do that? Which so, so the question is about you science know. experiments. Where, where do you challenge do A? Challenge, 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 challenge A. A. I know so going into challenge A, the science curriculum for challenge A is very unique. And without it, the rest of the time, like science in general is just lucky, in my opinion. I'm a science geek. I, I read the science books for fun. <laughs> just as a disclaimer. Um, challenge A science is unique because the first semester and second semester. Second right? semester is human body. Second so semester is human body. Right. Okay. First semester, each week, you're basically doing a miniature Linnaeus project. So you're taking, you, you go through the different classifications and you take one organism or one species from that, you write one paragraph, you illustrate it. Um, yeah, it's based and you, yeah, you, and, you speak, and you speak about it. Yeah. Yes, you present it. So what that does for your science basis is Later on, you'll be covering biology again, but it's considered kind of like a biology course. Um, there's no like science experiments in Challenge A. You can do them at home. Yes, there are. You do a shark. Oh yeah, the shark talk. Oh, they. So I have like, like, the voice talk. Yeah, I have the voice. They charge. That's a voice talk. Um, I think about halfway through the semester, the first semester. We don't do the second semester, I don't think. We, die, we get to dissect a small shark. And that's yeah. done on the campus? That is done on the campus. They have the whole, they bring the sharks in with like a special dissecting kit. Everybody gets. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was super cool. My sister hated it. Um, <laughs> but I think, I like, I have to admit, challenge, the science bit of challenging was my favorite subject. The first semester, getting to pick an animal, present it, write about it, especially one that you really like. And I liked the second part was fun too because you're going about the human body and you get to learn how to draw the human body. And at the end of the year, we're expected to draw all the body systems from memory, and you don't think you can, but you can. It's, it's one of the. It's a. It's fun. Yeah, were they detailed drawings? Yes, extremely detailed. And did you label them? Yes, we did. And did you define those labels? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the kids, the the kids right. don't sometimes understand what right. you're trying to hear from right. them. Right. And, and on our campus, you can ask questions of them yes. instead of exactly. <laughs> and on our campus, we actually did two dissections in Challenge Day. Okay. So the tutor, if they have the funds, they really can go and do more dissections, which I chose to do. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was just looking through the catalog. History. Is there any, like, what do you use for history? In Challenge A. Okay. In Challenge A, <coughs> history is incorporated in all of the subjects. Because, um, specifically in the Latin, um, the Hindley Latin that we use covers um, specifically Roman history. So you're getting that in Latin. In math, the Saxon math curriculums, um, they briefly, actually, they briefly introduce a few history things throughout them, right? Yeah. Can I remember that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like mathematicians, stuff like that. The history is very integrated. Okay. In everything. So they don't have a specific. All the, way all, all the way through. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This past year was the first year we we've had a specific history course per se, um, and that was with the art and music history. That was the first time it's been called history. But previous years, for Challenge B, history is integrated in the science projects because you are researching the scientists every week. You're learning about the history. You have to learn about the cultural history around them to understand how they're working, why it was different, how it was new. Um, so that's how history is integrated in CC. It's just. Okay, so I just had a brand new literature about the science from Challenge 1 through. Or, uh -huh. because she just didn't see a history book, and I didn't know, so I was like, and well, literature, literature is yeah, a huge literature. Okay, <coughs> okay. and I just not know, but that answers. Can you speak to that geography? Because that's challenging. Yeah. Is it called A, B, then 1, 2, 3, 4? Right. Yes. Okay. Geography. You got this. Maybe. Well, yeah, what's 
she's asking about history specifically, but what Farrell is really wanting us to include and to help you guys see, because y'all are not public school educated, is explain to them what you're doing in the geography uh, seminar. Geography, so what geography is, first of all, as the basis, is you're memorizing the entire world. So at the very end, you get to draw the entire world. It's awesome. And included in drawing the world, what are you doing on that drawing? Labeling. You're labeling drawing, what? You're labeling each country and from you. Okay. Countries, capitals, and then land features, rivers, mountains, etc. You also will um, take, you will, you get a uh, geo terms notebook and you'll write geography terms, um, different land features, and you will define them, what they are. That's all open book. Then there's catechism questions. Those are definitions of different um, geography terms. And you'll, Uniformitarianism. Right, you'll memorize those and then that'll help you later on. Is that A? Yes. A. Oh. So, do y'all understand how that geography helps you with history? Yes. Okay. Okay. Caleb, can you answer that question? Yeah, do it. Would you? Could, okay. How do you think that's going to help you with history? Understanding history. Because we'll get to understand, especially like now when I'm taking back through history books we started, we were using before we started doing CC. And when they say things like along the, you know, um, when they say things like along the eastern edge of the Black Sea, or in yeah, every, river. yeah, different countries where the borders were, like Northwest border, I can see in my mind where that is. And so I can understand what they're saying and put it into context of the actual geography of it. When Russia invaded the Ukraine, <coughs> could you see that? Did you have to go to the map to find Ukraine? No. Not likely. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question about, I'm sure they take AP courses for college. Is that something that they do? I'll let these do. Caleb, you want to talk about AP courses? How many do you take each semester? What's your goal like at the end? Uh, mainly last year I did an AP science. So I did the apology of science, the, the, bio, the biology, but my mom bought me these DVDs called the Dive CDs, and he goes through the textbooks, and you watch the lectures that he gives. So he lectures on the textbooks. He has additional reading, and um, the the labs that he does are AP labs. So that's really the only AP course that I took last year was a science, but we we brought an additional DVD to go with that. Um, Actually, I've taken no AP courses yet. Um, we're going into this next year, but CC, I mean, it depends on what your goal is for the AP courses, because if your goal is to get credits for high school and graduate with enough credits, CC, when you're done graduating from high school, or you might know this, you graduate with more credits than a college prep school does. Okay. I um, okay. Specifically in math, science, and history. Um, how is CC designed to encourage children to take AP courses? Okay, in so normal high school programs, what I tell, how is the CC yes. program designed to help yes. kids take AP courses? I was going to say online. Actually, I forgot to say online. Anyways, um, so the first two years, basically your freshman and sophomore year, are your hardest years. Uh, work-wise. Um, three and four, you are working, they call it smarter, not harder, because they would encourage you to go for your AP courses that those years. So for instance, we just finished one and two, and they were extremely, extremely time consuming. Um, that should lessen up these next two years so that we can take the AP courses. That's how that works. And work. Yeah. They understand that the kids will start working. Yes. I'm Enjoy. curious how much time y'all spend each day doing your CC uh, homework, I guess. Okay. If I were to condense it all in like one segment of time, it'd be seven ish hours, sometimes eight, depending on if I'm writing a paper that day. Um, Caleb? Yes. Mom? 
mine, we started every day at 8, and I finished almost at 4 at night. So, 3, three o'clock, 4 at night. Good. Kyle? Um, actually, I, how long did we take about? Five hours, probably? I think we take about five. We start at nine. We start at about nine every morning to try and stay consistent so that there's a routine. We don't have to, one morning we don't sleep in, and that's when we're up early at nine. And we usually finish, we're usually going to probably, I'd say about one or two with me, especially like even if I take like a 30 minute lunch break. Yeah, it all de so for me, it all depends on how persistent I am, how, how much, how, how focused I am and how much I'm putting into the work. I can start at 8, and if I get up and I have a goal and I'm working as hard as I can, I can get done at 12. But then again, if I get, I, I always start at work, I always start my school at 8. So it, if I work, I, so there are some days, this, for instance, when you get mock trial in, I'll be working till 3.30, I've worked till 5 sometimes. It all depends on how focused you are and how, how much you're putting into your work. It should take about an hour, hour and a half per seminar. I've got one more question about managing your time. And how much do you manage your time versus how much does your mom manage your time? And it probably will vary depending on A, B, 1. But I'm kind of curious how that transitions. And I, before you answer that, I'd like to add on to that, was A, you know, where you really learn how to manage your time. Yes, so. that's where we started. And I must admit, I am extremely unorganized, and I have uh, this extreme ADHD, so I have problems focusing and problems knowing when to stop talking. So <laughs> my, my mom will tell you that. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> but he's growing in self-awareness. <laughs> I'm necessarily self-control. Um, I uh, specifically this year with Challenge B, my mom has been stepping back, letting me at the beginning of each year, especially Challenge A, they will give you a planner. The first six weeks, the teacher, in my case it was Mrs. Russell walked through it with us, telling us, okay, this is what you need to write down for this and this and this. But with, after those six weeks, they will need to do that on their own. I, with Challenge B, we came home the next day on Tuesday. We, me and my mom sat down, looked over the lesson, and I wrote everything down. And then she let me do the work. She, we didn't plan it ahead of time. So there were some times that because I'm not focused and easily distracted, I was, I took hour long breaks because I'm just weird like that. And I had a lot longer because I decided not to manage at that time. And even though it was hard for me to do that, I still think it was the right thing to do on her part because you, otherwise, if you help the manager kind of time, when they're off on their own, they're not going to be able to know how to do that. They're not going to have someone to push them. And if you let them fail now, they'll be able to get up sooner and work through it. <laughs> Another thing is that Challenge A, our, our tutor, she was, she was a great tutor. Um, she said that you should spend, a, this was an A, she said you spend an hour each day on a subject. If you're doing Latin and you spend two hours, you're going to get frustrated because the if you look at this and say, oh, this is ten problems and I'm spending two hours on it, you're going to get, oh, man, I stink at Latin, and then you're going to get down on yourself. So spend an hour each day, and you might not get finished, but that comes later. You, you spend an hour, and if you have two problems left after dinner, I'm going to finish those two problems. You just spend an hour on each subject. Then as you get to B, I just finished B, you, you get to be a little more self-aware. You say, oh, I can finish Latin in 20 minutes. So you do that, and then you have a little more time, and you put that little bit more time that you have into a different subject that you need a little more time on. So you kind of learn as you get more into the challenges that I need more time on this so I can spend less time on this. 
So then you learn to manage your time. Are you are you, are you asking how do we manage our time? Like, what does it look like on paper? Or are you asking what is the results? Like, how does it look like in the actually planned out? I think I'm wanting to know how do you learn how to manage your time? How do you get there? Yeah. And how much is mom helping? Okay. Or Celine. Is it you playing? Yes. Yeah. In my case, my sister. <laughs> Celine is the most organized person. She makes checklists for everything. You get up in the morning. There's a checklist for everyone. And how much they have to exercise. It. It's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. Just it's helpful. It. And sometimes annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on. Um, no. So in challenge A. That's where I, okay, it's where I was supposed to learn time management. I'm kind of still learning that. Um, so now my routine is either Monday after school lets out, um, so we go to ballet and I'll do my schedule there, or I'll do it the next morning, like first thing in the morning before I start any score. Um, because if I don't have my schedule, then it just, you know, schedules help me a lot. Um, I don't like schedules. So she's but asking, no. when, so, when did you start owning Yes, that exactly. So in challenge A, I needed a lot of help planning my schedule because I didn't know what, I, mean, first, I just didn't know what would go on in the week. So mom and I really did that together. Or mom would do it occasionally. But it was together for all of challenge A until maybe like the last few weeks. Challenge B, it was sporadic, so I would ask her, I would do it for one week with her, and then maybe one week with off, which is off and on. Challenge one, Celine and I did my schedule. Challenge two, Celine and I did it the first few weeks, and then I started taking it over. So I'm still kind of taking it over, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So Celine did that. No, Celine really doesn't have any problems. Celine, well, in that her time management is amazing. It's really wow. Well, okay. Well, for me, I've always kind of been organized. So time management was not a huge problem, but I didn't have to learn it, especially me with mock trial. Um, to kind of answer the first part of Miss Hamilton's question, Mom never really said gave me a schedule. She gave me a planner and said you need to have your stuff done. You need to have your uh, assignments done by the next week. She encouraged me a lot. She encouraged me to do a math lesson on Monday night. She encouraged me to maybe work on a project a little more before I went outside. But she never said, you have to do this. And what that did is that, that forced me to get it done myself. So that if I didn't do the math problem, I was late and I was struggling and annoyed at myself for not doing it, and it made me do better next time. So she encouraged, but she never told me what to do, which helps a lot. In some cases, I, if my mom had done that, I would have been like, no schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> my question really adds on to that. Now that you've been through the time management, would there, looking back on it, would, would you have wanted any earlier intervention in foundations and essential on the time management? And what would, have that, what would that have looked like? Well, I started Challenge B. I didn't do anything past that. But, um, before that. <laughs> so um, in B, there was a lot of encouraging to like read the books over the summer, stuff like that. I never really did that though. I'm like, I don't want to do schoolwork in the summer. <laughs> and I kind of regret it later. So um, maybe more emphasis on it, mm -hmm. but it's more just stubborn as my part. So. <laughs> I have no idea. Just being honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't even remember what we did. As an essentials tutor, I've tried to encourage them. Yeah. You need to start because this is going to be a challenge. But should they even start in foundations? To do you mean own? should they start? Would it be easier? Do you think it to would start managing your time earlier? Have them talk okay. to a challenge kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, I think it probably would have helped a lot if I had started earlier. Definitely. Um, if I had really started in challenge A, it would have helped a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I don't know how that would look. I just don't know. I think it would help. For me, I had one year of, um, of foundations and essentials. And yes, I think it would have helped. But one of the easier parts of doing it, of not having it at that point, I'm kind of half and half. Because I would say, yes, we want to. But if they have siblings, it would be extremely hard in the same area because they would all want to, they would all have a different idea of when to do things. So from a certain perspective, yes, I think it would be a very smart to have them start managing their time now so they get used to it. But at an aspect, you may want to wait until it gets into some heavier work where they actually it may, where it's work time managing is actually yes, more, yeah, more yeah, needed yeah. than yes. in essentials. You're kind of forced to work. You're forced to. I mean, yeah. you want to say anything? Well, I can say something. Do you have an opinion? Yes. Share your opinion. Well, see, what I, what I was thinking is sh you, you're you managing their time as their primary educator. So maybe show them how you're managing their time. Because you're going to say, okay, we're going to do math. And here's how long we're going to work on math. And here's how long math takes you. So you need to show them how time is supposed to be managed. Because, you know, if you give them their time, if you give them all the freedom in the world, they're going to say, okay, I'm going to do my math, and then I'm going to go play with my Legos, because that's what I would do. That's <laughs> what I would do. But so you can you kind of show them how time is supposed to be managed. At the foundation age, you know, they're not going to really understand, oh, if, 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 it's my, if it's my time, if I'm managing my time, you know, recess is two hours long. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm thinking you should show them how to manage time and what time management looks like at that age, and then they'll slowly get to be more independent and see that as they get older. So Joshua, even just seeing here's all your assignments for the week and checking them off as you go, kind of models for that, you know, mom's planning it and scheduling it, but the child is still checking them off and, you know, seeing the process. And Celine would write out the schedules, which was always, I mean, she was immediately just a planner. <laughs> Like on the I, had to learn that. I really like, like on her. Ride. <laughs> 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 yes, she writes. Yeah. I'm just wondering, y'all have kids someday. Do you think y'all would see CC or? Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> How are we doing on time, Tracy? Oh, we're quite over, but it's been great. Do <laughs> yeah. you want to take more questions? Well. Um, I think we should move to the mom panel. Okay. Like this has been great. Y'all, bravo. Yeah. Super helpful.